Hey, so this video is um, going to be solely dedicated to just getting the subframe bushings for the 280ZX in. Um, some might say that's not a big deal, whatever. Um, these are polyurethane bushings. They never they did make them for this car. They don't sell them anymore. I'm sure you could call up Energy Suspension or someone else that makes polyurethane bushings. Um, whoever their suppliers are, I'm assuming they don't make them. And say, hey, I need a set made, and I'm sure they'd have the die. They just don't make them because it's too expensive or they don't have enough. But... Besides the point, so this is a 280ZX 1983. Show you the car. Yep, doesn't have much suspension on it at the moment, only has one corner with suspension on it. That's one half of it. But with that being said, I'll go ahead and show you all um, my polyurethane bushings. They're again from a 300ZX. I think you, I got mine from a 1986, I believe. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But basically, what you want is a first gen 300ZX because they have a similar mustache bar. Uh, if what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn them down. And I have these sizes, I'll include those. But, go ahead and show you all. Get the light out of my pocket. So, that's mine. So with that being said, I have both sides in. Um, I have the measurements I'll show in this video of how thick they are, what I had to do to cut them, yada, yada, yada. All right, so I got another quick little tip or I guess, statement of what I'm doing personally to my car. Um, hopefully it's not too dark. Get my light out so you can see me a little better. Probably ghost now, but so the 280ZX subframe, the mustache bar, whatever you want to call it, the subframe, whatever, uh, has two points of contact on the bottom of the like, underside of the car, and then it has the diff as the third point of contact. Um, so the two points of contact on the stock suspension, or stock, two points of contact on the stock bushings, um, they use this little spacer thing this one's all mangled and cut up so this sits up against the car and it sits let's see if i can get some light on it and hold it so it sits and like this one's all torn up but if it was flat it would sit like this up underneath the car and then so it's pretty thick right and these are they're not hard but they're squishy i can squish that with my hand um let's see if i can get you a, a shot of so I see how much I can just move that. That's just with my finger. And granted, when you tighten down, it can only move with so much. But that makes it that much taller. Uh, however tall one of these little lugs is, that much taller. Uh, like because that's how much like more space there is between the body of the car, uh, the body of the car, and the um, subframe. So my subframe bushings are a little thicker just because they're from a 300 ZX um, first generation one. Since they have a similar mustache bar, but it's bigger. Uh, so I had to turn those down, and I'm, they're a little taller. But so since I'm getting rid of this, that will help like, bring the subframe up closer to the car. Which, theoretically, will help lower the car from where... And then if it had these little washers on it. So that's my thought process of that. And I'll show you all where these came from. Um, and I'll explain my method of removing them. I'm sure it sounds terrible. But they came from... It's all nasty, too. It came from this little thing. You can see like where it used to sit. So it would sit, where's my hand? It would sit like up in there around. I'm not gonna put it back on because it's a pain to get off once it gets all the way up there. But it would sit like up in there. And they would sit pretty flat up in there. And they're actually, they feel like they're part of the subframe, like glued to the car or whatever. They probably are. But I went ahead and ripped them off. Not that big of a deal. Um, I used a couple, the first one I did two or three methods to try and figure it out. And I ended up figuring out that a, a Dremel um, to go through before you even like break it free from the car and get it thinned down as much as possible without one to like go through it because I don't want to get the car body um, dremeled out and then I would break it through with the screwdriver um, and then hit it with a dremel again we'll have the wet screwdriver wedge between it and the body of the car to give it a little gap so if I do go through it it doesn't hurt the car and then once I get it super thin I'll come through with 10 snips and just snip it snip it snip it and then use um, channel locks to just pry it off and that came off much easier I used an angle grinder the first time and that just I couldn't get a good cut with that. I mean, maybe if you're good with the angle grinder or you're not doing it on the ground, yeah, sure, but that's just my experience. So I'm gonna move on to getting the subframe back in and I'll show you what it looks like when it's in. All right, so another issue has occurred or found another new thing that I have to do. Um, the sleeves that go in the polyurethane bushings, I have to cut off that, that ring, this one. My thumb is all the way around. Um, they're a little too tall and they're not allowing the bottom of like the like the big flange thing, I don't know. It's not like a bolt, but this thing to clamp on, which clamps onto the body of the car and those two bolt holes and then to the, through the sub from there. It's like the thickness I need to take off is like that washer thing, 
but I'd rather keep that on there because it helps center everything. So I'll take it off the sleeve that goes inside the polyurethane bushings. Pretty simple, just get an angle grinder, cut through it. It's thick stuff, but it'll, it should go quickly. If you had a bandsaw, it'd be a lot easier, but I do not have a bandsaw. All right, I figured I'd show you all what I'm doing. Um, this is the uh, metal insert. It goes in the middle of the polyurethane bushings. You can see where I have my groove that I'm cutting. Um, the wheel that wobbles like crazy. It still works with the washing machine motor. So very ghetto setup, I know. Um, it does work though. and just shows that you can do it at home, so no excuses, we'll get it done. All right, so this will be trial number three, I guess, or four. I don't know, I'm gonna stop counting. Um, I've gone ahead and I've shortened both of these. Um, the top and the bottom polyurethane bushing, and I've shortened the sleeve inside. Hopefully, now size that'll work i'm gonna finish pressing these bushing or the sleeves all the way in um you gotta test fit in the car i've just been test fitting a lot and we'll see if it works if it does we'll let you know what i ended up with my heights and whatnot all right so i got both my top bushings again or probably in bushings they both have a thickness on this like the edge part of 10.4 millimeters um, so hopefully hopefully this is the last time putting them in um all right, so for the next set of bushings, the other ones, um, these are gonna be the bottom ones. They're both gonna be right around 12.32 millimeters. Um, they both have little like lips on the edges. You said I was grinding them down or cutting them. Um, they're not super smooth, obviously. I'm doing this on a homemade machine, um, but they're 12.3 and this will hopefully work. I said that a lot, but here goes nothing. All right, um, I told you I'd measure these again if I ended up having to pull them out again, and I did. And they're right around 55.7 millimeters. These millimeters with these here, and what I was taught to use. Also, another thing with moving and installing the subframe, I found that putting it on a middle, very middle on a jack, you can get to both sides pretty easy, and you can jack, use your feet to use the jack handle like right there, and move it up and down. I've installed this about six times now, so. That's what I found to be the easiest method. You may find easier methods for you. That one works for me. Um, but these subframe bushings are pretty dang strong. The other ones, like I said before, or in the other video, I don't know which video it was anymore, but I did say it. Um, I hit it with a hammer when I pulled it after, like they pulled the subframe out and I hit the bushing with a hammer and it just fell out. They're supposed to be like pressed in with like a fair amount of force. Um, the other side, it took me a ridiculous amount of time and getting and like bending and hitting it just get it out but the one side literally just fell right out so they were not in great shape so this will definitely be an improvement um but yeah also i didn't put any grease on it because they should never be moving so it didn't come with any so some people say we grease all your pile your thing you don't need to for this like and subscribe also to the one person who said something hopefully this answers your question it was a while ago but uh yeah got to it as soon as i saw it i guess